And there are a lot of uh, words or expressions that we say as Americans that people, well, I understand non-Americans, they love it, right? I mean, they may not, not have heard these expressions, but they love it. Uh, so like, for example, have you heard, you know, when people say, oh, this, uh, this idea, it, it's got legs. Have you heard that? You heard that. Of course you have. Yeah, I, I've heard that. Uh, not too many people, but uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, the way they say things uh, basically is something of visual of a non-living thing that have having legs, I guess it is. Yeah. First time like, I yeah. first time I heard it, it was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a new generation. Yeah. It's got legs like like if you have an idea, that means in other words, it's expandable. It's um, it, you can expand on it. It can actually grow to become something. Right. It's got legs. Mm -hmm. The idea has got legs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, it's pretty. Uh -huh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that idea has legs or sometimes, you know, you hear people talking about wine. It's got legs. Have you heard that? Uh, no, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. Like when they mm. when you swirl your wine in a in a, mm. in a glass and then it kind of mm -hmm. uh, dri kind of dribbles down the edge they call they say it's got legs mm -hmm. yeah uh, I've, I've heard that before as well mm -hmm. um what else like I, you know what americans always say hang in there right yes yeah, that's so common every american does that uh i think that's very uh probably in the top top uh 20 or top 10 hang in uh -huh. there in our in our vocabulary of of uh idioms yeah expressions yeah i really like that hang in there hang in there like when you like kids yeah when things like when things are not going so well and you're just giving somebody a little motivational <clears throat> i'm not 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 talk but just sort of encouragement like it'll be okay so you'll say hang in there yeah when you're having a don't bad give day up. or something yeah exactly don't give up something is happening to you on a bad day whether you know personal or, or job wise, you know, just hang in there. It'll, it'll get, you'll get through it. You know, things will calm down and yeah, yeah you'll get, it'll, it'll get, be okay. Get by. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another one that I really like is guilty pleasure. I love this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I use that a lot. Uh, guilty pleasure. Um, uh, what, what, what do you use it more guilty pleasure? Yeah. So we use it to describe things that maybe are kind of, um, you know, maybe ridiculous or not popular, but we like it, right? Like, for mm -hmm. example, a lot of people will use guilty pleasure to describe a movie. Uh, oh, that movie's a guilty pleasure, meaning um, it was really like, it's really not a good movie, but I like it. And I don't care if nobody likes it because it's a bad movie. It, it's got bad reviews. I like it. So it's my guilty pleasure. That's right. We always yeah. say that about movies or even food or, and, and you know, mm -hmm. anything along the lines of maybe it's, objectively not good but you like it or maybe it's mm -hmm. weird or something mm -hmm. yeah for me I, I tend to use that a lot on the food because uh i just love food so yeah movies what? too uh -huh. i mean anything pretty much yeah what's a guilty pleasure food for you oh american pot roast the pot roast for me is by far the guilty pleasure for me yeah oh what yeah pot roast is good no pot roast is good yeah I mean, not too many Amer uh, not too many people knows that we have more than just junk food, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of other foods that uh, people aren't familiar with, and pot roast happens to be one of them. Uh, for me, this is the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like when people talk about guilty pleasure foods, I think that it typically refers to like food that maybe most people don't like, or maybe it's really unhealthy or something like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like people might say like fried chicken is their guilty uh -huh. pleasure like they feel like no they really shouldn't eat it right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's their guilty pleasure like uh it's something that they enjoy despite being maybe not that good for you so in the context of food that's how that's how you would use that yeah uh -huh. nice. but uh, um what uh, what other guilty pleasure things can you think of for me it's basically movies and uh food uh Travel too, uh, you know, going to places. I, I kind of enjoy that too when I use it. Uh, of course, you know, wine, alcohol. <laughs> I like to drink, so yeah. It's like my guilty pleasure is the uh, Don Julio, nineteen forty-one. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Or is it forty-two? I think it's forty-one. Yeah. 
also people you can say somebody is a guilty pleasure for you right like celebrities maybe yeah yeah reality yeah. shows might be a guilty pleasure because you know reality shows right you might people might be like oh reality shows what a waste of time it's trash it's just dumb you just become dumber after watching it right but you could say hey it's my guilt it's my guilty pleasure yeah exactly reality shows uh series movies all of that yeah even yeah. youtube yeah even music yeah sure you're, yeah definitely maybe yeah. certain songs are actually mm -hmm. really really cheesy or really not good songs but for some mm -hmm. reason for whatever reason you like the song because maybe it reminds you of something who knows it just for mm -hmm. whatever reason puts you in a good mood mm -hmm. ours too right my guilty pleasure is like uh, well i can't afford it but a, a bugatti right or mm -hmm. maybe a ferrari <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. sure yeah. um okay what else think of another expression that Americans what about love. what about take an l take an l is is so huge right uh like take an l take the loss right uh it's kind of a phrase when you know when we say something and people can't seem to accept something and just say hey take the l man take an l don't you worry know, about I, it yeah. i've actually never used that have you oh no oh no, I've used you, that, yeah. use, you do yeah uh, okay uh -huh. okay yeah People who doesn't want to give up and say something and just, you know, it's so passionate about and, and uh, hey, you know, just take the hell, you know, you lost. <laughs> Don't try to uh, debate and say something about it. Uh, just take the L. Just take so what L. does it mean? What is what is that? What does it mean? Just take a loss. Yeah. Take a loss. Oh, mm -hmm. just like forget about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, OK. Take, like, don't... take a loss. Yeah. Oh, in other words, don't worry about it. Just write it off yes exactly yeah oh that's another one write it off okay yeah mm -hmm. write it off is like take an l mm -hmm. yeah you know like when you're having a debate about something or even at work right uh you know you're telling the person how to do it and the person says something intelligent and you don't want to agree and just say dude man <laughs> he just he just got you just take an l man don't worry about it yeah uh, okay okay yeah. got it okay so not okay not quite the same as as um what did I say? Take a. What did, what did I just say? What? I said it was like this other one. Uh, write it off. Write it off. It's yeah, write it the off. Same. It's yeah, not quite the same. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, write it off is something else. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And well, write mm -hmm. it off is sort of like forget about it. Just leave it. Yes, exactly. Don't go back. Forget it. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah, yeah forget about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so what else here? What about squeaky clean? You know, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, that's that that's pretty squeaky clean. You know, the way you've uh, did something, a phrase, whether it's something that you said or something that you cleaned the house, or or my gosh, you know that that kitchen is squeaky clean, or wow, you really cleaned that car. I mean, that's pretty squeaky clean. Yeah, or you so can use it different phrase yeah so do people okay here's the thing i guess to me i don't yes you can say something is super clean and you'll say it's squeaky clean like the floors you know like when the floor's really mm -hmm. clean maybe when you mm -hmm. walk in it makes a squeaking sound so they mm -hmm. they use squeaky clean to uh to to imply that something is very clean but also you know people will use squeaky squeaky clean in this context where you'll you, he's you'll be like he's He's talking about other uh, people doing uh, all sorts of bad things, but he's not exactly squeaky clean himself. People say that too. Yeah, to, exactly. To, to mean somebody uh, is not that good of a person, even though they're accusing other people of doing bad things. And you can say, oh, he's not squeaky clean himself, which means he's actually not all, he's not done, a, you know, uh, it's not like he hasn't done anything wrong either. He's not squeaky mm -hmm. clean, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like his uh, TRW is in squeaky clean. Uh, his Politicians is in, in the context. Clean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Often in the context of uh, politicians, people will be like, oh, it's not like his record is squeaky clean. You know, like he's done some bad mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what? Let's see. What else? How about. Uh, how about. Under the weather is very under the common, weather. right? Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, under the weather is always when somebody's asking, oh, so you're not going to be able to come to the work, you're unable to come to work today? Yeah, I'm feeling under the weather. 
I don't think yeah. I'll be able to come in. Yeah. Yeah, people would use that one a lot, a lot, mm -hmm. feeling under the weather. Yeah. But I think it's important Especially, to, to mm -hmm. state that I, it's important to state that when you say you're under the weather, that doesn't mean like, you know, you have some terminal illness or that you're, you know, you've been sick for three months. You know what I mean? It just mm -hmm. means it's a very, it's a temporary situation. It's a very temporary mm -hmm. state of not feeling well. So it might be one day of a headache. That's feeling mm -hmm. under the weather, right? Yeah. Even so, if you're feeling lazy and you don't want to go out and you're supposed to have an appointment and meet somebody and you say, hey, you know, I'm feeling under the weather, so I'm not going to be able to meet them, uh, be able to join the meeting or something. You just may be feeling lazy, but you kind of use that as an excuse. I'm feeling mm -hmm. under the weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We, and you mentioned you're feeling lazy. So uh, sometimes people will refer to that as being a couch potato. Yes. Right. right. Which is yeah. very funny because mm -hmm. you can say couch potato, but you really can't. You cannot say sofa potato, right? <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, couch I mean, there are times where I'm a couch potato. I mean, you know, when I've been, you know, been watching some movies and things like that, maybe Netflix or something. But yeah, uh, but, you know, I'm, I got my chips going, you know, <laughs> but how about you? Have you ever been a, a couch potato? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, but it's very dangerous because I can spend a lot of time also doing nothing. I'm chilling and doing nothing, yeah. which is why I try not to allow myself to do nothing. Otherwise, mm. it just will not end, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But it's very funny that they use the word potato because I'm trying to think like I can understand couch because you know you're on you're being you're on the couch and you're not doing anything, you're relaxing, but I don't know where this the potato word comes in. You know, that might sound very funny to people, especially if you're not an uh, American. Like why why potato? You know, what is the reference? I guess it's because of potato chips or anything, you know, that you're eating, maybe potato chips I think is probably the best way. So you uh -huh. like the couch potato because you're you're too busy eating potato chips while potato watching chips. a movie. Yeah. Seems like a very is it a very American thing or do people do in other cultures? You know, the whole sitting on the couch eating potato chips. Is that is that super American, I wonder, compared to, you know, other countries? I, I don't think it's an American thing. I think it's worldwide. I mean, there is are everybody? a lot of couch potatoes, yeah. yeah I, I think as everybody as a human being, yeah. There's yeah, always but I a mean time eating where potato just chips. Don't feel like anything. Oh, eating potato chips? Yeah. Is it uh, very American? Probably, yeah. I would think it's very American because it's kind of a junk food. Because, But then again, you know, what What, what do you consider other culture? Because some of their main, may be snacks, but not necessarily potato chips. It's different type of snack based on their culture. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I guess and it's Americans not necessarily really, potato. Yeah. I guess Americans really do love potato chips because if you're in the supermarkets, uh, in America, you'll see the potato chip aisle is one big aisle. There is a humongous selection of potato chips. Uh, whereas like in uh, other countries, I don't notice as much potato chips. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I miss about the uh, United States too, because you can go for one aisle in a grocery or in a market and you see the whole thing of potato chips. And I can spend like at least 10 minutes there trying to go to each one and say, okay, which one is good? Because there's all different type of flavors, different type of brands. Uh, styles, et cetera. So I enjoyed that, but uh, of course it's not a healthy food. So, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a great snack. Yeah. You know, it's, yes, obviously potato chips are not healthy, but you know what I've gotten into doing is looking for healthy potato chips or as un or as uh, the least unhealthy one. So in America, it's not that hard to find like reduced fat or re like low fat or reduced uh, sodium, reduced salt, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. those are the two things that might make potato chips not that healthy. Mm -hmm. So, and, and so like in the U.S., like it's very easy. For example, uh, at the supermarket or like there's this one I used to like buying at Trader Joe's, which is like uh, low sodium, low fat. In fact, the on the bag, it would say, I think guilt free or low guilt uh, potato chips or something like that. And uh I, I would get I would get those. Whereas I noticed, like um, in other parts of the world, it's not as easy to find potato chips that are low in fat and low in sodium. And sometimes I see potato chips that are super high in fat, and that like that that's like the first thing I look for when I buy potato chips is the the amount of fat. Because I know it may sound funny, like potato chips. What are you doing worrying about fat? But I actually think that sometimes when potato chips are too fatty, it actually doesn't taste good. It's too heavy, and your fingers are all like coated in grease. You know that kind of I don't like that kind of potato chip. 
But is it really true? I mean, with all that uh, non-fat and all that kind of thing, non-oily stuff, and is it really yeah. true? Because it seems like it's still unhealthy, right? The bottom line. I think the I honestly what well, what does what makes potato chips unhealthy? Uh, it's the frying process, maybe, and also the saturated fats. Perhaps it has to do with the fat and the sodium. So that's why I look for potato chips that have a reduction in fat and sodium, and I feel like it'll be less mm. unhealthy. I don't think potato chips are ever going to be a healthy food, but um, because yeah. I love potato chips, like I I can't, I it's hard for me to resist eating potato chips. That's why I look for the um, more healthy options, which exists in the U.S. Pretty easy to find, but I find that they're not that easy to find uh, outside the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, here in Brazil, I mean, uh, we have like the Americans, the Ruffles, the Lays, but there's mm -hmm. so limited choices in Doritos. Too, right. But compare that to the U.S. I mean, we have all kinds of Dorito flavors, Lays flavor and Ruffles mm -hmm. flavors. Here it's like, yeah, they have some flavors here, but it's catered more to the taste bud of uh, Brazilians. You know, I can't see <clears throat> like the Americans, like for example, the ranch dressing of Doritos. I mean, the cool ranch, oh, right? Yeah. I miss that. I I, I loved that, that when stuff. I was a kid. Yeah, I still love it to this day, but I can't find it here yeah, in my city. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Only the cheese, yeah, the nacho cheese. Yeah. The sta the standard one, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Um, I noticed that Pringles is really popular outside the U.S. You, you can find them in any supermarket uh, in the potato chip. Uh, people love Pringles. I, I don't like Pringles. You don't like Pringles? Oh, my God. Pringles are you, great. Yeah, I love Pringles. Oh, yeah, there's really? Pringles here, too, in my city. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, that could be your... I like uh, the your, original, your, too. Your guilty pleasure, Pringles. Yeah, exactly. I don't like Pringles. Uh, you know, I think that they're freaky because they're all uniform and they're, they're like the same. They're like stamped out, right? Because it's a processed chip. It's, it's not actually even a sliced potato, right? It's just, it's processed, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. But that's the beauty of it. I mean, they're all, you know, they're the all the same, right? Yeah, it's not like the other chips, right? So, yeah. I used to eat them when I was a kid. And uh, even mm. then when I didn't care about like uh, potato chips, how, how healthful they are or not healthful, whatever. I used to think that Pringles were unsatisfying because they were so thin. I felt like I wasn't getting enough chip. Mm. Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, for example, if you eat a Dorito, the, mm. uh, the, the Doritos are robust. You know what I mean? They're, mm. they're thick. There's like, a, it's almost like there's a lot of meat on the bone kind of, do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm -hmm. And some of the dip too, we don't have the dips here, like the American dips, you know, I still love the, the ranch dip, right? Or, or the nacho cheese type, you know, the cheese whiz type uh, nacho dip. Uh, we, I don't, I don't have that here in Brazil. Oh, so, okay, so, okay. Yeah. So I kind of missed that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Let's let's talk about another phrase, so then people don't think that we've become a potato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How about riding shotgun? People always go, I call shotgun, right? You hear that? I mm. call shotgun. It has nothing to. Does it have anything to do with weapons? No, it doesn't. What does it tell people what it means? Uh, you fill me in on the shotgun because I don't hear too much about the uh, right shotgun. Oh, okay. What is that? I mean, so yeah. when people say I call shotgun or I'm riding shotgun, that means they want to sit in the front seat. They're sitting in the front seat. So when you say I call shotgun, okay. that means. The uh -huh. front seat is mine. I'm sitting there. So, oh, I, so shotgun okay. refers to riding in the front seat. But I don't know what the what is the correlation between, you know, a weapon like a shotgun and riding the front seat. I have no idea. I don't know where it comes from, uh, except drive by shooting, yeah. drive by shooting, or maybe <laughs> it, it puts you in the front, uh, closer to the glove box where you where you might have stored your gun. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's because of the gang members, or or you know, like when they. When they go drive by shooting, there's a there's a shooter there in the in the passenger side and in the front front seat. So he's aiming and he shoots from the from there. Uh, uh -huh. In the back, it's harder to shoot, right? Because there may not be a window, especially if there's a two door wind. If it's a two door uh, a car and you have the back seat, so it's yeah. really hard to shoot and kind of get the angle. But if you're in the passenger side, you can have many different types of angle. I think that's uh -huh. why they probably call it a shotgun, but I don't hear too much about the, the shotgun, right shotgun, yeah, no. I, I'm more curious about your experience um, with drive-by shootings. Have you uh, 
ever done it because <laughs> you seem to know <laughs> a lot about the angle and where to right. sit and I'm like, it's a lot of it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of movies and also i let's talk about this uh, <laughs> let's talk I've, about I've, I've, I've also experienced someone try to shoot me with a shotgun too so really uh, wow yeah i was in the okay. city of bell gardens uh okay. i was in bell gardens or, or like in the border of bell met a friend and his friend was djing it was like a wedding reception and there were like three three gang members all all you know shaved heads i think one was like maybe 18 years old that dude was like driving and then he had like two young two young other i guess uh teenagers or gang members there one seemed to be like under 16 years old looks like initiation and there was another was like probably 16 17 years old so yeah and they had a shotgun they were trying to oh. shoot me but that's a long story though okay so, yeah. okay wow yeah. all right um how about enjoy people say enjoy just, just like the word enjoy yeah they just say enjoy like well um like if you're saying you're gonna go do something people say enjoy or um uh -huh. you know at, when you a parting greeting sometimes a parting greeting uh you know like when you yeah like in when you would uh part from uh, somebody you might say okay enjoy as in like bye right? oh yeah yeah uh -huh. like enjoy your day uh, enjoy yeah well, I'm going just, back, the, just one i'm word. going back to yeah. work i'm going back to work mm. sarcastically yeah. say yeah well, enjoy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's more like you know have a good day enjoy your day enjoy your stuff whatever you're doing just enjoy yeah yeah that's that's pretty common yeah just that one word it's, it's a good way to say goodbye by just saying enjoy yeah 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 enjoy sometimes yeah but i like it when people use this sarcastically too you know mm -hmm. yes like right. when you don't really like when you don't really like or agree with what they're doing uh, then you might say yeah well in, you enjoy like for example how would you what would be a good example like um like if somebody says oh, I'm, I, i've got to study all weekend i'm not going to be able to really go out and you you just be like oh, all right well enjoy <laughs> you're kind of like you're almost kind of like pretty sarcastic yeah yeah uh -huh. so we we say that yeah oh you know man i'm having a bad day i gotta go pick up my my mother-in-law well enjoy <laughs> yeah yeah exactly your mother-in-law yeah. that's funny yeah uh -huh. yeah what about like uh I, I like to say this pretty much is uh that's what's up yeah that's what's up yeah. okay tell us right. about that one i think well, I, I that's what's yeah uh -huh. no, i mean that's what's up is that's that's how it is or that's what's how that's how it's going right uh-huh you uh -huh. know you know what i'm talking about like yeah. that's what it's all like about kind of yes exactly uh -huh. like you're kind of explaining yeah. something mm -hmm. yeah you know like hey you know i'm a lakers fan you know there's nobody better than the Lakers. That's what's up. <laughs> oh, that's how it is. Okay. Yeah, that's how it, it is. That, yeah. I use that pretty often here and there, but not like constantly. I mean, do you use it or? Um, that's what's up. No, I don't know. I don't know. I've used it before, but I've never, mm -hmm. but not, no, not in recent memory. No. Oh, okay. All right. But yes, I've heard it before. Mm hmm. What about like take a chill pill? I mean, that's always a good one, right? Take a chill pill. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes, that's a really good way of chill the f out. <laughs> that's yeah. a very nice way of saying. It. Yeah, <laughs> take a, like when somebody's like too. Yeah, what are the, so what what situations might in what situations might you use that if somebody is just too annoying, they're really annoying you, or maybe they're too overly stressed yeah. out about something micromanaging you or something and someone trying to direct you and and all gung-ho and all you know kind of pushing you to do something that you don't want and just like aggressively shoving it down your throat hey take a chill pill man relax relax dude yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, it has right. to do with you know uh telling somebody to calm down but it's not like you, you're not going to say it to your boss right you're not going to say take a yeah. chill pill you're not no that's not right. like that but you might say to your to your co-worker that um you know your boss needs to take a chill pill or yeah. something like that but you can say it to your boss if you have a pretty good relationship or or you say it jokingly right like, yeah, oh, you know okay, yeah. every every everyone's going to be working over this weekend because we got a deadline oh my gosh just take a chill pill man <laughs> yes yeah. yes that's true you could say that you all need to take yeah. a chill pill yeah um mm -hmm. 
And what else? I know you guys have heard of this one. This is pretty common. Uh, it's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. Something that's super easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy to do. Something that you can do easily or anything easy at all. It's like a, a walk in the park. A piece. Of oh cake. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's a walk in. Mm -hmm. the, it's a walk in the park. And mm -hmm. you know, people don't even say it's a piece of cake anymore. They are just. They just say piece of cake. Yeah. You could say correct. piece of cake. You don't even have to say it's a piece of cake. You could just say piece of cake. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, I, I like I prefer using it just the walk in the park. You know. It's the walk Make in the it park. easy. Everything is easy. Just Yeah, just it's a walk there. in the park. Yeah. These, <laughs> uh, these expressions are interesting. Like how is a walk in the park easy? Oh, we could get <laughs> we could get very un PC about it and say, well that's that expression really is discriminatory against um, disabled people. You know, some woke person is saying that right now. Mm. <laughs> right. Because, you know, because there's a whole bunch of things we can't say anymore, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some, some of these, like some expressions are such that, you know, you might have been able to say it, you know, at one time, but then, you know, times have changed. And now the wokeness has made it, you know, like you shouldn't say certain, certain things or use certain words mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what can't you say anymore that you used to be able to say uh pretty much a lot of things <laughs> everything nowadays right you can't say things that we used to before like you know when you're pissed off at somebody you'd call that person a derogatory word and you can't use that anymore right you may call somebody like a retard you're, you're such a retard oh, oh wait can't, you can't say yeah. that anymore yeah it's like really i mean every small thing is is you know so what sensitive. is uh yeah. what is if somebody is um mentally challenged okay we years ago you would say they're retarded but then you can't use yeah. the word retarded so what do you call that person mentally disabled or what like a, a person who's really retarded yeah. yes like what do you call mentally them? disabled yeah oh, uh -huh. okay there you go yeah. mentally disabled yeah. Or how but about if it, but if uh -huh. but if what if a person that you don't like or something like that and and you you want to say that that person's retarded oh, but I how are you going to yeah. say that right how no, are you going to call that person yeah but the thing is is if you don't like them why would you care if it's not proper you don't like even right. like them <laughs> so yeah. you just go ahead and say it I guess yeah no you just got to say you're an idiot or you idiot yeah but I you know kind of like the word retarded in some ways yeah. Because it's more than not idiot, I guess. <laughs> if you're saying it to their face and you don't like them, I think that you don't need to edit yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah. What about like even basic word, basic phrases or basic words that um, seem very benign that you can't say anymore? Like, for example, a pregnant woman. Uh, so, in 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 the in all its wokeness you cannot say pregnant woman you have to say pregnant person as if a man can be pregnant but whatever um, yeah you can't yeah they don't want you to say pregnant woman crazy yeah that's that's new to me i can't believe that yeah I mean, what, what did you say something a woman at birth or what, what was that? oh well child with no I, mother I, of birth or <laughs> give, gonna oh, birth, give birth oh well, okay Birthing a birth person. person? Birthing huh? person. Yeah. So instead a of saying birthing person, yeah. Instead of saying pregnant woman, you're supposed to say birthing person because you can't, you don't even, you're not even supposed to say woman. I don't, I really don't understand because you, you know, you can't as a man give birth. However, there's a certain population of people who seem to think you can. I don't know what drugs people are on these days, but um, mm. I know, and I mean it like as derogatorily as possible. I really don't know what drugs these people are taking that would uh -huh. let that would that would get them to think that a man could possibly give birth and therefore you shouldn't say um birth you know pregnant woman but you have to say birthing person yeah i can i'm just thinking like if a person is so high and the person says hey you can't call a woman a pregnant person and the guy is so high and says okay then i call him a pig <laughs> yeah, I yeah. swear to God, I feel like this comes from um, this comes from heavy drug use. This wokeness, I don't know what's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, what other words can you not say anymore? That seems ridiculous. About have a nice day. I mean, we it's... don't use that anymore, right? Have a nice day. You know. Wait, you don't? 
I mean, not as much, right? Have a nice day. I mean, you know, it's maybe not nice day. I mean, it's it is used, but people just tends to use all kinds of things, you know. Take it easy. See you later. Yeah, easy. yeah. Hasta la vista. Yeah. Because you know, huh, even though we are uh-huh. American, we yeah. tend to use like Spanish. Hasta la vista. But when you say to a Spanish speaker, they think it's like, well, that's that's weird. You're you you know, you're pretty strange. <laughs> You know, because we Americans, we just adapt that because of the movie, right? Hasta la we vista. Say, we even say just hasta sometimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what's or really peace, interesting? Peace out, right? Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways you can say uh, bye instead of just, you know, have a nice day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is used still commonly. I mean, like if at a work, at a working environment, you know, hey, have a nice day or have a nice weekend, you yeah. know. Have a, I know, I, I, no, I get what you're saying. Um, have a nice day seems almost too generic as if the as if the thought was not put into it. As if there's mm-hmm. right? It's almost as if it's yeah. too it's almost too reflexive to just say have a nice day without really meaning it. Yeah, too robotic. Yeah. Yeah, robotic. Um, mm-hmm. so it's almost like there's no intention when you say have a nice day. It just seems like yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. It sounds like something out of a greeting card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's why a lot of Americans don't use it as much. Of course, yeah. I mean, we still use it like in a work environment or something. But again, we we're not as much as sincere when we say that. You know, have a nice day. But really, it's like yes, it uh, lacks the I'm sincerity. Out of here. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. it's funny you mentioned that because I remember years ago a friend of mine was saying that his mother said to him, I don't know, he was saying some, he was telling her something, and she said, "Well, best of luck." And you know, like for a a mother to say that to a kid, best of luck. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with it, but it seems mm. to sound very fake and lacking sincerity, right? Oh, best of luck. Yeah, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. And I see where it kind of is along the same lines of saying to somebody, "Have a nice day." It there's a certain insincerity. There's a certain. It's very generic. It's very template, and it lacks. Yeah, it just lacks sincerity, and it seems just reflexive and robotic to say that. Yeah. I think it's almost the same as when we do uh, business letters, right? Sincerely, sincerely yours. Right. Best yes. regards, best. It's like, okay, what are we supposed to put, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, yeah. It's like there's no really sincerity in there. I think what it is is if you use the if you use uh, phrases that are more o- more often rip- written and used, excuse me. If you use phrases that are typically more formal and more used in the written context or in Mm -hmm. uh, uh, professional writing, like letter Mm -hmm. writing, whatever, memorandum, and if you say those, it sounds insincere. Like, for example, sincerely, the word sincerely, or or, um, yours truly, or, you know, um, how how Mm -hmm. else do you sign letters? Like... um, all the best. You're not going to really yeah. say to you're not going to say to someone all the best, but you would write all the best, right? Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, saying all the best sounds weird. Mm-hmm. Best regards too is very common, or just yeah, best, right? Yeah. Best regard. Mm-hmm. You know when you this is the funny thing that I think most uh, English learners would not understand is when you say things that are like formal and typically written that type of English and when you say mm-hmm. that it makes it sound disingenuous and it makes you sound sarcastic so if I say to someone all well all the best it just sounds very disingenuous right yeah exactly precisely yeah, yeah like best regards <laughs> like you don't say that <laughs> right especially if you're like you're leaving on someone and you say best regards <laughs> you know right at least yeah. if it's a formal letter or something or or an email or a text, okay, but you know, somebody that you don't know, even though you don't know that person, it's like best regards. And to use it verbally to a person, best regards, like, oh, what what just happened? Yeah, yeah. Don't say mm-hmm. it. I mean, writing is okay. And it, it only only like in a letter, even if in a text you write that, that's weird, right? Because that's not mm-hmm. That's the kind of thing that I think a lot of learners will not understand until Mm -hmm. they've had a lot of exposure to the language in different contexts. But yeah, it would have to be something that's written in the context of a letter, most likely a professional context, professional letter or something formal. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you Mm -hmm. say if you say all the best to somebody, that's not good. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do one more. Last one. For me, it's like uh, you're bullshitting me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you're bullshitting me, yeah. Or so, some I mean, people just say you're shitting me. Uh-huh. You're shitting me. Yeah, exactly. You're shitting me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, where, you're fucking with me, right? <laughs> where it well, means, it's mean, something yeah. you can't like. You can't believe somebody just said something. That's then you'll say you you shitting me. You're bullshitting. Yeah, me. yeah. Or you can say sarcastically, or you can say it jokingly too. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it just depends on how you say it, and depends on the contents of what you're saying. So it can be used in many ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty common. You're you're bullshitting me, right? You're shitting me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, super like, hey, informal. Right. Yeah. It depends on how you say it, right? I mean, it could be true. It's like, hey, did you hear Donald Trump was like a assassination attempt? And that was the first time you, you pushed at me, right? You're kidding me, right? Yeah. Or like you can just say, it. you know, like, hey, Rebecca's pregnant. You shit me, right? Because <laughs> she, last time I saw, she was, she didn't want to get pregnant, right? Or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or, or she just, but she just had a baby last week. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Um what I think that's it, right? Is that it? Do you wanna any that's it? Yeah, I think that's that's good. I think we're yeah. good. I think we're yeah. good. There's other things, you know, maybe you know, stay tuned for the next one. We can expand more on this and, and give you more, you know, slang words and uh millennial generations or Gen Z slang words. I mean, just comment. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah, let us let us know if you have any questions also about expressions. Leave a comment. And don't forget, guys, please subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you all in the next podcast. Thanks, Leon. It was fun. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. See you all later, everyone. Ciao. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Ciao.